Good morning, day 13. I've got my water, apple cider vinegar. Just starting the day off. Um, I think today I have this craving for some sushi. So I think I'm going to make um, a special kind of sushi that I've never made before. But I'm going to record the process for you guys so you can see the recipe. And then, yeah, we'll see how the day goes. I think it's going to be kind of a, just a simple, easy day. I don't have any plans really for today. So just going to hang out and enjoy the day. Hi guys, time to make some sushi. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some rice and quinoa, mix it together. Um, we're gonna do one part quinoa to two parts rice, and then just an equal amount of water for all of it. Um, I've got jasmine rice here today, so I don't have any sushi or sticky rice actually at the moment, but you can also add like whatever, uh, whatever other grains that you wanna add. So basically you're just gonna take like a measuring cup, I'm gonna do two of the rice, one of the quinoa, and then six water and put it in there. But before you do your water, when you put the rice and quinoa into your pot or rice cooker or whatever, make sure you rinse and drain it a few times because there sometimes can be like dirt and sediment on there. And you'll see too, when you put water in the pan, it's gonna get a little bit cloudy. So just kind of like scrub it a little bit with your hands and then just kind of drain off the water and do that like two or three times. And then you're gonna go ahead and put it back in your pan. You're gonna heat it to a boil put the lid on and then just cook it on low until it's all done. So for one of the main ingredients in the sushi, we're gonna be using turnips, which are one of my favorite root vegetables. Uh, turnips are really good for like omega-3s, they have vitamin C, a whole different um, slew of B vitamins, vitamin K, protein, they're alkalizing for the body, good for digestion. So we're just gonna peel these guys and then I'm gonna actually put them through the grater so they're kind of shredded. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pan fry them and we're gonna make it two different ways. One's gonna be just kind of like a plain way and the other more of a spicier way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all the hard work now. <laughs> this is where we're at after doing just the peeling. I wanted to point out when you have vegetable scraps or any kind of peels and things like this, you can actually save them. And what I do is I keep um, a freezer bag in the freezer with a bunch of different scraps that you can either compost at a later time or what I like to do is once this bag gets full you fill up a pot or whatever with um, all the veggie scraps and then you add water and then you just boil it for about 20 minutes and strain it and then you've got your own veggie broth from scraps that you were just gonna throw out anyways so kind of a good way to have no waste really right so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and grate these. Um, you can also eat turnips raw, by the way. A lot of people don't know you can put them raw in salads and whatever. I'm just choosing to cook them just to kind of enhance the flavor for the sushi, but yeah. So now we've got the peeling part done, so we're just gonna start grating them now. So this is the aftermath. Basically, I just have like little nubs left. I call them like safety nubs so that you don't like scrape your hand on the grater. <laughs> So you can save these and put them like in your salad raw or you can roast these like potatoes. I love roasted turnips. Oh my god. If you like roasting potatoes, try doing a turnip and you'll be amazed. Um, the rice and quinoa stuff is finished. That's what it's looking like. And it's good that this is kind of finished first because you want this to cool off slightly. I still have the lid on because I want the moisture to stay in it and I want it to dry out. But I kind of leave it like off a little bit so it can cool because you don't want to put piping hot stuff into your sushi. And then this is our yield of all the grated turnips. So we actually got a really, really good amount. If you can kind of see, like, this goes pretty deep. So I'm really happy with how much we got. So what I'm going to do is grab some seasonings, and then we're going to fry this up. So this is basically what it's going to look like when it's pretty much done. It kind of looks like sauerkraut a little bit. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take half of this out, because we're going to leave half of it just like this. And the other half, we're gonna add some spices and stuff too. So I'm gonna put half of it into like a little bowl. So here's the portion I'm gonna reserve just to keep it plain because my mom doesn't do well with spices. She's very sensitive to them. So we're gonna leave this one for her. I'm gonna make some sushi for her. But for me and my dad, we're gonna do some spices. So I'm gonna put in some of this hot sauce. This is actually really good because the ingredients are super clean. Um, it's just aged red peppers, vinegar, salt, and xanthan gum. And this is only 99 cents for this big bottle, so this is pretty good stuff. But you can also use like Korean red pepper paste or whatever hot sauce that you like. Some garlic powder, I'm gonna use some black pepper and also some onion powder. So I put in about maybe a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of onion powder, 
a teaspoon of garlic powder and maybe like a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of the hot sauce. And I just turn the heat back on like medium. And we're just gonna fry this and kind of incorporate everything together. I think I might actually add some more hot sauce to it though, cause I want it to be more of like a vibrant red color and kind of spicy, so. Let me grab some more. Looks like rice from this angle, doesn't it? Okay, so we're gonna grab some more of this. One-handed skills. <laughs> I like spicy food, you don't have to make it this hot, but let's go crazy here. That looks good. It smells amazing. Alright, so I'm just going to finish incorporating this probably for another minute just so everything's mixed together set it aside and grab the sushi sheets that's a tongue twister sushi sheets <laughs> and I'll be right back so I'm also going to put in just a little spoonful of this plum sauce just to add a little sweetness totally optional you can use whatever sweetener that you want to this is going to be messy isn't it okay ready we're going to run over and hope this doesn't drip on anything <laughs> Okay, one last drip. You can do it. You can do it. All right. <laughs> so just kind of mix that in there. And once you get it off your spoon, you can turn off the heat, and this is essentially ready to go. So here's what our spicy turnip mixture looks like. And I also put in a little bit of... Um, a bagged coleslaw mix into a bowl to use that as well and I'm just going to show you how to make the spicy one first because basically it's the exact same you know method to use the non-spicy one but this one looks really pretty so I want to use this one for the demonstration and then for the sushi ugh, there we go again the sushi sheets or nori or seaweed or whatever you want to call it um this is my favorite this is a Korean version you get 10 sheets um it was $2.95 and this was for gimbap. I'll show you what it looks like. It'll say for uh, gimbap right here. And that's a Korean type of sushi. So this um, particular seaweed is a little bit more heavy duty, I guess you could say. It's a little bit thicker so it doesn't tear as easily and it's easier to roll up. So I'm going to take one of these out and show you how I do sushi. So I'm going to do this as best as I can with one hand. Um, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to take some of your rice and quinoa mixture first and then you're going to take just like a big scoop and then kind of spread it around see how much you need um this is still actually quite a bit hot but not like piping boiling hot so that'll still be okay if it's a little warm you'll see some steam probably coming off of it yeah we're gonna work with that so we're gonna put just like a nice big scoop in the middle and then just kind of flatten it out a bit, kind of like this. And just kind of spread it out, but not like aggressively so you tear the sheet, you know what I mean? And then basically we're gonna to try to cover, we're gonna leave about this much space going across, but we wanna cover most of um, what we can down here. Now I'm no expert at this, like so if you know a better method than me, please share it in the comments below. This is just what I do. So I'm gonna use two hands here and spread this out a little more evenly so I can show you guys um, what it looks like and I'll be right back. This is basically what you're going for. So you can see all the quinoa and rice and just kind of make sure, since this particularly isn't a sticky rice, just to kind of mash it down so it all sticks together. And I just thought of this last minute, but I'm gonna go ahead and take some toasted sesame seeds and just kind of sprinkle them around. Just for some extra like nutty flavor you know and then just kind of pat it into the rice mixture so that it'll stay all right and then what you want to do is you want to put your fillings kind of towards the middle of where your rice is so i'm going to take some of this if i can get it probably like a good scoop or so and just kind of stick that in the middle and then just spread it around This 
going to be a relatively thick sushi roll, so may the sushi gods be with me when I'm rolling this. I probably shouldn't have put that much on, but we're going to give it our best shot. <laughs> and then we've got some of the raw cabbage and carrot mixture. Just a little bit of that for some texture and freshness. Stick you right here. Kind of push that down a little bit. Now, I have no idea how I can show you guys how I roll this. Some people have like those bamboo mat things that you just roll this in. I don't have that. I do have one of those sushi bazooka gun sushi -zy things, but that only works well with sushi rice. So I'm gonna be doing this the old fashioned way where I literally lift this up and just roll a tight roll until you get to the end. You're gonna stop rolling about right here when you get to the end of the rice. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna dip your fingers in some water. You're gonna wet the ends of it and then just finish rolling it. So the wet end should help stick it together. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this and then show you guys what it looks like and keep your fingers crossed for me that I can roll this successfully. <laughs> totally perfect. Um, you can kind of see like right here, it's kind of bursting at the seam a little bit just because it's a really fat roll. <laughs> but if you look in the side, you can kind of see all the good stuff in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll up a bunch of these first and then I'm gonna cut them all at the same time because that'll give it a little bit of a chance to cool off a little bit more because it is still relatively warm. So I'm just gonna put these on a plate as I roll them and then I'll show you guys how to cut into one at the very end. It's about 20, 25 minutes later. Uh, we've kind of got 10 rolls of sushi. <laughs> So here are five rolls of the plain version and five rolls of the more spicier version. I haven't cut them yet, but I will. Um, and these are really awesome to make like for meal prep because you can either leave them whole, just like grab and go and wrap them up and have like a burrito sandwich ready to go. Um, it lasts a while in the fridge. Um, I'll show you what I have left over too because there's actually still like half a pot of rice quinoa that can be used during the week for different things. And then I used a good amount of both of these turnip mixes, so there's still a little bit left over. I might actually use up the rest of this and just make like a little rice bowl during the week or something like that. But yeah, I'm gonna let these um, chill in the refrigerator. I probably cut one of them right now just to show you guys, but I want them to be like fully chilled before eating them. And I probably won't eat them till a little bit later on in the day. It's like a little after two in the afternoon, if you can even see that. Maybe you can see this one a little bit better, the creepy clock. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't even had anything other, um, blah, 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 blah. haven't had anything else besides my water and apple cider vinegar. So I'm gonna have maybe some chlorella and some water to make a green drink, chill for a while, and then come back and show you guys how to cut this. Basically, I don't have a way to cut this and show you at the same time because I do need both of my hands and like no setup I've tried with this camera aka cell phone is working so basically you just want to have your knife you want to make sure the knife is wet so that stuff doesn't stick to it as it's cutting through make nice slow cuts so you're not like tearing away at the um, seaweed and then in between every cut rinse your knife off in the sink and then just make sure you get all the debris and like stuck rice off of the knife and it'll help you to make nice clean even cuts through your sushi so I'm gonna cut this one and just show you what it looks like on the inside Another trick actually I was cutting, I was thinking that I should show you, is I usually cut in half first, then I cut a half again, and once you have these two pieces, cut those both in half. So I usually get about eight pieces per sushi roll, and that way they're like kinda even. Obviously this one's like a little bit uh, thicker, but you know what I mean. So I try to aim to get about eight pieces per roll. Sometimes you get six depending on like how wide you go. So here's our eight pieces. Usually the ones on the ends are gonna look a little frumpier than the rest just because it's hard to stuff the edges perfectly and roll it. Um, but I'm just gonna show you how these look when you take them apart. This one's a little bit stuck here. There we go. It almost looks like, let me focus it. It kind of looks like there's like spicy tuna or something on the inside, doesn't it? But it is not, it is spicy turnip. I think you guys will really like this. Okay, let me turn this one over this way actually. 
and there you have it. There's one sushi roll all cut up. It looks really, really awesome. Um, you can put whatever you want in these. This is just like a general idea of how to make sushi, but this is one of my favorite flavors ever. And I hope you guys can give this a try. I'm gonna find a container now to put these in and cut up a whole bunch more. <laughs> Cutting was a success. So I've got both kinds here and they're actually two pieces deep each. There's like so much sushi here right now. Oh my God, I'm so excited. And there's still one whole roll of each in the fridge as well. So yeah, that's how I make sushi. Hope you guys give this a try and enjoy it. And then we'll see what the rest of the day holds. All right, you guys, it's the end of the video. Happy new moon. I hope you're able to let go of what no longer serves you during this time. And I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.